Please begin. Yes, uh, my name is Lanny Marchant. I'm a 2016 Olympian in the 10,000 meter and marathon uh, this past summer. The, I'm the Canadian record holder in the marathon, the half marathon. I'm a graduate of the University of Ottawa Faculty of Law, Michigan State College of Law. I'm a practicing attorney in Tennessee, and I'm licensed and ad admitted to both the state and federal bars. Um, I'm here today to speak on my experience as an athlete in Canada, as a female athlete in Canada for that matter. Uh, as we've heard earlier this morning, we're getting close to having more representation, almost equal representation of our, our youth and our women um, at all levels of sport. Uh, when I contacted Athletics Canada, they told me that we have almost equal representation of boys and girls, men and women, registering with different facets uh, through Athletics Canada. We have gender equality in our national cross-country program now, so men and women will compete uh, over the same distances. As we saw this summer, our women's teams across the board were a force we reckoned with. Uh, and I think perhaps to an outsider, it appears that we have gender neutral neutrality in Canada. Um, and based on my experiences, however, I, I, I have to say that's not necessarily true. Uh, looks can be deceiving. I came into this sport late. Um, I actually kind of had my appearance on the scene in 2012 when I was just missed out making the Olympic team that year. At the time, Athletics Canada didn't see me as a rising star. Though I was well under the Olympic uh, marathon standard, I was not selected to represent Canada at the London Olympics. We had zero representation in the women's marathon and 10,000 meters runs that year. Since 2012, I've set our national record in the marathon and half marathon, and I've made every international team I've set out to make. The problem is that they keep moving the goalpost. Most recently, our 2016 Olympic and our 2017 World Qualifying Marks have been substantially lowered in the women's marathon and 10,000 meters, where our male counterparts see little to no reduction in the qualifying marks that they're, they're supposed to meet. This summer, Krista Duchesne and I were the first women to line up in Canada in the women's marathon since 1996. That's 20 years. We've spoke about how high-performance athletes are meant to inspire. The funding we receive is meant to improve enrollment and encourage throughout encourage participation throughout high school and post-collegiate levels the period when we're most likely to lose young girls in the sporting world i question how this initiative will be met if it's another 20 years before we see canadian women running in the olympic forum in preparation for this summer's olympics i once again found myself in the crosshairs with the high performance division of athletics canada i promise i don't like poking bears i had qualified for two events, but the ability for me to double came under scrutiny. My being vocal about wanting to double brought along the threat of a sanction against me. It was during those six weeks of limbo that my perspective switched. What started out as a selfish endeavor, I wanted to go to the Olympics, I wanted to do two events, became something different and it took on a whole new purpose for me. I was battling Athletics Canada for two spots I rightfully earned on the team, but it wasn't just my right I was fighting for. Canadians spoke up and voiced their desire to see me compete in both events. Not because I was a medal contender, not because it would be nice of Athletics Canada to let this little girl run, but because they wanted women and girls in their lives to see a strong Canadian female competing for Canada. In my mind, I was no longer asking for permission for myself. I was demanding it for all of us. There's very little understanding of the development of a female distance runner in Canada, and that age does not necessarily dictate results. The funding of athletes like myself, over 30 and female, often comes with performance requirements that are not set on younger athletes or equally on our male counterparts. I will likely not be funded in 2017 after being on the, po the 2016 Olympic team. Our current government stated a goal of gender parity in Parliament. We haven't seen that in sport in Canada yet. High performance directors, head coaches, CEOs, and other title positions within sport federations, the COC, and Sport Canada are still predominantly male. After what our female athletes achieved in Rio, there is now a greater expectation to see us reflected in the governing bodies and agencies of sport in Canada. The issue here is not just about partic participation numbers or female representation as athletes or sporting reps, however. We expect our teammates to have our backs, not to comment on our backsides. We do not need men in the sporting world to proclaim that they stand behind us as feminists because it puts you in the perfect position to comment on our behinds. Instead, we want you to stand beside us. Recently, I was running with an Olympic teammate, a man. We were passed from behind by a cyclist who recognized me and congratulated me on my performances in Rio. 
My running companion immediately commented that this, the cyclist clearly recognized me by my behind. I'm one of the fastest distance runners in Canada, male or female. I have a very distinct running stride. I was probably the only woman in Toronto running at that pace at that time. But my teammate decided to minimize and dismiss the compliment I had received and tie it to my body. I don't pretend to know his intent behind his words, but I have come to learn that it's not the intent of our words that always matter, it's their effect. We look at action over intent. If we'd like to see actual change in high performance women's sport in Canada, we need entities like the COC and Sport Canada to step in when a policy or criteria is issued and places a higher burden on women. If you, if you, our government, wants to see women continue to develop in sport and see our female population living healthy life and active lifestyles, there needs to be a checks and balances on our federations. Sport Canada and the COC cannot turn a blind eye and say the conflict is solely between the athlete and her federation. If we want to see continued change and growth in women in sport, it needs to happen on all levels. Our teammates need to see us and treat us as equals. Our governing bodies and administrators need to understand our development. We still have a very relatively short history between women in sport in Canada and worldwide. We need to see ourselves as equals and stop asking for permission. I'm done asking for permission to be seen as an equal on or off the field. And I think we're starting to see that women in sport are demanding it as well. And thank you. Uh, final question for uh, Lanny. You at one point mentioned they keep moving the goalposts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Could you... Uh, could you uh, reiterate what, what exactly you meant by that? And there's only about a minute and a half left. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, before Krista and I, we hadn't had women run the marathon since 1996. That's not to say we haven't had women who were competitive by the IOC and IAAF standard. It's just Canada kept setting the standard faster. And then in 2012, I missed the team. So did Krista. In 2013, we both made the world championship team with a slightly relaxed standard. So it gave us the opportunity to compete on the world scene. And then since then, I've made other teams. We saw with the 2016 Olympic criteria, we were right back where we, were, we started in 2012. So to make these teams, and everyone's celebrated what Krista and I have accomplished in women's running, and I've, I've become a role model, whether I set out to or not. Uh, and I've inspired all these girls, and we have so many marathoners coming up that are, you know, late 20s, early 30s, that could make these teams. But Athletics Canada came back and set the goalpost back to 29.50, faster than 2012. And then we went, we competed in Rio, we performed really well, and then 2017 comes along, and our standards come out, and they're, they're back fast again. They just... If we're, the, the goal is to inspire, and if the, the new movement here is to inspire girls and to have representation, have athletes like me be these role models, well, they're going to see us out there competing. Chris and I are the only two women in the country who can run these qualifying times. We're the only two women in the country that have been able to do it since 1996. I, when I set the record, it was a 28-year-old record at the time. So if you want women to, be, to participate, if you want young girls to think they can go and compete at the Olympics, whether it's in running or other events or other sports you have to stop setting standards that eliminate us that take your top women out and that's what i mean by them moving the goalposts right. back okay thank you uh, yeah i actually started out in sport as a figure skater so i was very much the pretty little girl in the pretty little box and i skated up until i was about 15 or 16. i transitioned into running because i i liked running you cross the finish line you knew where you stood you knew if you won you knew if you didn't it didn't matter what you looked like crossing the finish line. And I think that's a message that, it, obviously it spoke to me, and I think that's something that needs to speak to other, to other women and other girls in sport is, it's not how we look doing what we're doing. Um, I spoke before the Olympics about what I do is fierce and sexy, not how I look doing it. And I think what we've seen in mainstream media, and even from some of our title sponsors, um, it's it's the, the attractiveness of a female athlete. It's what our bodies look like in an attractive way. If, by all means, if you want to comment on my behind, comment on it because it's, of its muscular way it's built. If an athlete has broad shoulders and muscular arms, it doesn't make her any less feminine. And I think when you're a teenager and your body's transitioning, and I saw it very much in a figure skating world to a running world, you, we don't want our bodies commented on. You, you see us all start putting on bigger clothes and, and hiding our bodies. Um, so until the sporting world learns how to connect and come come forward and, and comment on us as strong people 
and not necessarily try to put us in pretty little boxes, I think that's where we're gonna, that's where we're losing girls, is our, our bodies are ours. We're really shy and awkward in that age. Um, and in my mind, I wanted something where you couldn't comment on my body, you could comment on my performance. Right. And, and thank you for that. Um, I'm a rugby player. And oftentimes, I mean, I've coached women's rugby, and you know, one of the things that I've found that sometimes, particularly in rugby, uh, young women that are participating in it are said, ah, oh, you're just a butch. And it actually comes from women to them and their peers that are saying that to you. How do we change that to so that it's, I mean, Grant, I understand your comments and, and when, when a man does that, but how do we stop it from women saying it to their same, and part of it is they need to recognize that they need to be active as well, but how do we stop that? Girls are mean. Like, we are, <laughs> we're, we're harder on ourselves than any, any guy or any man's ever gonna, gonna be on us. Uh, and, but I think it's addressing it across the board. Um, I think if, if we stop having men comment on our behinds um, and, and take away and be dismissive of what we've accomplished because of how we look, uh, women will, will learn to stop picking at each other as well. Uh, I think more women like Mandy and myself, if we speak up and, and say, you know, like, talk to me about being an athlete. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an athlete first when I'm competing. I'm a, I'm a woman second. And I've, I've always said that, and I, I very much believe it. Uh, and f it's a matter of getting into the schools and, and teaching girls that our self-esteem doesn't come from putting each other down. And I think that's just... It's how we've been raised. It's how the men around us have been raised as well. Like you, you, you knock somebody down to build yourself up, whether it's about gender or whether it's within gender. Uh, we've talked about transgender. Like it, there's, if it's different, we comment. And if we want to make ourselves feel better, we comment in a negative way. And I think it's, it's getting at the ground root and building up gender or not gender wise Thank you. The biggest issue that we still, we, we're facing still is funding. Um, we have funding through Sport Canada. We have our private sponsors that, as athletes we, we seek out. Uh, but in terms of, of programs and, and initiatives, uh, from, the, from the federal standpoint, it seems very much like you, the, money's, the money's going into a lot of talk. I don't, when I, when I commented earlier that it's not the intent behind our words, it's the effect. It's also, it's not the intent behind what we're, say, we're gonna say we're gonna do, it's, it's action. And I think we, you know, it's, it, I'm very fortunate, I'm very um, happy to be here speaking on this matter, but if we're just gonna sit around and talk about it, then I don't understand what we're really looking, what we're, we're going to accomplish. Uh, as a, a, f a female that, I, I went through university, I went through law school, Nobody ever really told me that I could have, we're told as women we can have it all. We can be professional women, we can be a, a mom, we can have hobbies, we can work out. Nobody really told me it was okay to accomplish all those and then walk away and be, and be a professional athlete. Uh, I think for, for young girls and women, we're not, we're not the same as, as boys. Uh, if a guy is halfway decent at hockey, he's going to go all the way and try and make the NHL. I saw with my collegiate teammates, it was perfectly acceptable for them to graduate, not pursue a secondary degree, and live in a house and, and live like frat boys trying to, trying to make it on the running scene. It was, it's not been told to us as girls the same way it has been to boys that it's okay to pursue sport and that you are just as successful as a female doing that. You don't, I'm very fortunate, I'm very glad I have my degrees, but nobody told me I didn't have to do it that way. And I think if the federal government wanted to start sending out that message, that success it can come through sport, because it's through sport that we end up with some great coaches, and we end up with our, our Minister of Sport here. She said herself, like she, she participated in this initiative years ago, and it kind of in, introduced her to politics. Uh, so we have a lot of female athletes out there that could turn into future ministers and pr future professionals, but the, the pressure doesn't need to be on us to be that first. Uh, well, what my experiences have been, is I've, I've been privy to conversations where, yes, the, the jobs might be opened up to men and women equally, but then I've overheard conversations where, well, if we give the job to her, we can pay her less. So I think we're still dealing with wage gaps and wage issues um, it, to get these roles. I know um, I, went, I went to school in the NCAA system. I went to UT Chattanooga. UT Knoxville, everybody knows, is the big university in Tennessee. 
their women's basketball coach was making pennies compared to what their, the men's coach was, and her team was winning NCAA title after NCAA title. Uh, I think that's paralleled often in our, in our sporting environments here in Canada, whether it's basic level coaches, the, the, you know, if it's a volunteer basis but they're given a bit of a grant or funding, it might be higher if it's, if it's a male coach. Uh, you look at the title positions in Athletics Canada, Equestrian Canada, Canoe Kayak Canada. When these jobs come up, I, I, I'll admit I haven't seen the postings, but I often wonder if they are posted or if they're posted equally where women are going to see that these, job, these jobs are available when the, the spots come to be filled. Uh, it seems very much like we hire within our own, and because it's been so male-dominated, we keep hiring men. Uh, I think we need to cast a wider net. Ms. Marchand, you said that your funding will come to an end in 2017. So it's harder for women to get sponsors in sports. Why is that? By my Sport Canada funding, my carding will, will likely end. Um, the list actually will be out tomorrow, so I can't comment directly. Uh, but I was given a restriction on my funding this past year that I had, and it was uh, the restrictions were only given to those athletes that were over 30, and the majority of those athletes were women, that we had to perform on a certain basis at the Olympics to be eligible for funding going forward. It doesn't matter that my age puts me perfectly in the window to be a finalist in the 2020 Olympics. It doesn't matter that I'll stay in the sport another four years. As a woman over 30, I had to perform. I had to be top 15 in the 10,000 in Rio to be eligible for funding going forward. I was 25th, and then I turned around two days later and was 24th on the marathon, and that doesn't warrant anything. Uh, in terms of private sponsorships, it is more difficult for women, and I, I don't have a good answer why. I know that I'm a, a very, very vocal Canadian runner in Canada. I'm sponsored by ASICS Canada, uh, but I know that my ASICS male teammates make more than me. And again, I don't know if it's because our history in sport has been so short that the companies don't necessarily buy in to what we're selling. Uh, but I know that when I've hosted community runs, people sh 20 people will show up and they all have a brand new pair of ASIC shoes on their feet. So I know that I have that power to reach people and I know that my background with education, my background with coming from a, f a large family with a single mother, like I have an interesting story and we have so many women with these amazing interesting stories, but the companies are still looking for the Wheaties box and you typically on Wheaties box we have men. A lot of, co most countries go by what the IAAF or the IOC sets as a qualifying mark. I'm not saying Canada is the only one that moves that mark, but we seem to be the only country without the depth that warrants moving that mark. If we were the US, if we were the UK, and we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten girls capable of running these times, and you want to make it a more competitive team, fine. But when you have one or two or maybe three women capable of even running under the IOC standard, why move the goalpost even further? Yeah, I, I believe I, I've, I covered most all the bases that I want, wanted to touch on. Um, I recognize the role I play as an athlete in Canada and the more important role I play as a female athlete in Canada. I spent since the Olympics speaking at several schools and at different expos and talking about getting out of my own way and the struggles that I face as an athlete, body image, otherwise. But then also talking about the people and the, the, the federations that, are, that stood in my way as well. Um, and I, I meant it very much when I said that we, the athlete can't be the one that's constantly taking on these battles. I, there weren't, the women before me didn't necessarily have, um, I don't know why, they, didn't, they, they weren't making teams, but they weren't standing up and arguing as, as loudly as I am. And I don't know if it's because of the background I have or because at the end of the day, I, I don't care. I, I, it's, I want to represent Canada, and I would hope you want me out there representing you, but if you guys don't want me there, then fine. I'll, I'll find something else and excel at that. And it might take more money, and it might take more time, but the government and the different federations, Sport Canada and the COC, need to have our backs. If I'm willing to stand out there and be vocal and face the re retribution and retaliation of my federation, I would hope that I'd be able to rely on you and on the, fe the, other, the bigger federations to kind of come to my aid when, when I do need it. 